Uh, during the month of March, there were over 220,000 immigrant encounters, uh, people trying to cross through the border with U.S. and Mexico. Uh, man, that's up 33 percent compared to February, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Numbers like these certainly do uh, impact other governmental agencies, uh, but to what extent is sometimes less reported or perhaps reported from one lens? one perspective without taking everything into consideration. On Morning in America, we are having these conversations with our viewers, and we're asking you to ask questions, uh, and we're responding to you with unbiased expertise. Mike Kruger is a News Nation viewer in Virginia who contacted us with questions about what's happening along the U.S.-Mexico border, and for uh, the answers today, we're turning to White House columnist with the Hill, Niall Stanage. Good morning so much. Uh, thank you so much, Niall, for being with us. This first question from our viewer, Mike, is in regard to unauthorized immigrants or people who cross over uh, illegally. Uh, once they cross the border, they, they often turn themselves in. So let's just take a look at the question. What we don't hear is what happens to them when they get to their destination. Where do they go? Where do they end up? So, Niall, that is the question. We've seen long lines at immigration offices around the country, but where do uh, people who are coming here who really have only the clothing on their back, what do they do next? So it depends, Adrian, what their status is and whether they are intercepted at the first instance. Obviously, there are people who come into the country, escape detection and simply live in the shadows, and they predominantly go to a handful of states, California and Texas being the top. Too. I think Mike is talking about people who are intercepted, and if that happens, then they have a choice. They can either accept almost immediate deportation, or they can claim asylum, claim they are fleeing persecution. When that happens, they are detained for a short time, and they have an interview to determine whether they have a credible fear of that persecution. If not, they can appeal that decision. If so, they go into the general asylum process, and generally they are then um, monitored but not detained for the rest of that time. One of the problems is there's a ginormous backlog, so those cases can take two to three years to be adjudicated. And, and I think that this is a question that a lot of people have or are concerned that a lot of people have is that there, there is some monitoring, but with the large numbers of people who are crossing over from Mexico from various nations, to monitor half a million people, let's just say, uh, that's a lot of people in addition to the, the ones who are already here. It is, and that is really a great point, Adrian. You said in your introduction about the way that this issue tends to get uh, demagogued or looked at through one lens or the other. The official reality is this, according to the Department of Justice. When it gets to cases being adjudicated, about one quarter of people don't show up. About a quarter of final verdicts are delivered in absentia. Now, if we get to a situation where there are, say, 200, 300, 400, 500,000 people per month, you can extrapolate from that that a quarter of them never show up, even if they're ordered deported. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, it's difficult to defend that politically or, or ethically. Let's take a look at Mike's next question. What impact do they have on our resources like Medicaid, school system, housing? Could you take a look at that for the American public? All right, Niall. Sure, absolutely. One of the things that is counterintuitive is that unauthorized immigrants are not a net drain on the finances of the United States, mainly because most federal benefits they are not eligible for, not eligible for regular Medicaid, for example, not eligible for unemployment benefits. But they are eligible for emergency Medicaid. They will be treated if they go to the emergency rooms of hospitals. And one of the big resources that goes into unauthorized immigrants is education. Children are entitled to K through 12 public education. Where the net benefit kicks in, is in payments that are made by people working illegally. And those are significant payments that are taken in payroll taxes, even if you're working with a fake social security number. By one government estimate last decade, there was about 13 billion a year being paid in by unauthorized workers to that fund, and about 1 billion being taken out. 
So the actual net gain there to the U.S. Treasury was significant. And, and just to be clear, uh, because you just listed a whole bunch of information that I'm sure everybody was following, uh, but for those who cross into this country illegally, those who are uh, in this country hoping that they get legal status here, their children do automatically get education and health care. Is that true? They do get education, certainly, and I believe they get health care, although I wouldn't absolutely swear to that. But they definitely are entitled to public education as any child of that age is. All right. Niall, thank you so much uh, for the answers. And I hope that, Mike, you appreciate it and that you enjoy watching Morning in America and all of our programming here on News Nation. Thanks again, Niall. Thanks, Adrian. And you can send your questions to us here at newsnationnow.com slash feedback or download the News Nation app and we will get your questions here live answered on our show. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.